Hello everyone! If you follow my channel, then you know I'm a big fan of the Kratky method to grow leafy greens and herbs. The Kratky method is the easiest way to grow hydroponically since you don't need to hook up any pumps and you can use almost any food grade container, so it's great for do-it-yourselfers. But when I tried growing fruiting plants, such as tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, I had mixed results. I switched to WDC, that's deep water culture, and found that gave me better and more reliable results. And then we moved. So I packed up all my growing things and I'm still unpacking and trying to figure out where in this new house I can set up a growing area. This new house doesn't have the same light coming in through the windows like my old house, and there are no skylights and lots of trees surrounding the property, so it feels darker. So what do I have here in this new house? Well, this house came with an old sunroom. It's all glass and it faces south, so that's good. But we have lots of trees around and now we're heading into the winter, so the sun is just not as sunny as it could be. The glass on this sunroom has lost its integrity and there's condensation and even water between the glass panes and no way to clean that. We had the outside of the sunroom power wash, but that didn't clean up the area between the glass. I set up a small breakfast nook in part of the sunroom and covered the worst looking glass panes with a mural and some curtains and the rest of the sunroom I'm going to set up for growing. Seems fitting, half the room will be for eating food and the other half for growing food. Yes, I know we really need a new sunroom, but that's going to cost too much and we're not ready to do that just yet, so we will make do with what we have, which is not bad. I'm definitely happy in this new home. Just some things need to be fixed. You might be wondering what all these buckets are here on the floor. It's a new hydroponic system I'm setting up. It uses the ebb and flow method, and that's what inspired me to make this video about what the ebb and flow hydroponic method is. I'd like to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, and maybe even strawberries using this system. Right now, I'm testing the system out with eight different types of lettuce. I'll document and post that journey in future videos. So, what is the ebb and flow system? The ebb and flow system is also known as flood and drain because that's what it does. It floods a container that has plants growing in it, it floods it with a hydroponic nutrient solution, and then it drains that solution out. The container can be a growing tray or individual buckets, and the system usually involves using a water pump and a timer, and a reservoir to hold the nutrient solution. Here's what a typical system might look like. At a higher level than the reservoir, you would have a growing tray, maybe on a table. The growing tray is usually elevated in some way, otherwise you would need a second pump to drain the water, which is how this system works. The elevated growing tray is filled with hydroponic growing media, and the plants grow in the tray. At a lower level than the growing tray is the reservoir containing hydroponic nutrients. A pump is used to pump the nutrient solution up into the growing tray. So you'll need some type of tubing leading from the pump up to the grow tray. The pump can be operated manually or at intervals using a timer. And there must be some way for the water to drain out, so some more tubing is needed leading back to the reservoir or out into a waste drain. Gravity does the work for you if the growing tray is elevated, otherwise a second pump is needed to drain. Most typically the drained water leads back to the reservoir to be used again and again. This is referred to as a recirculating system. If the water leads out to a waste drain, then you would have to make new solution over and over again, which is not very practical and is, well, a waste. The idea of the ebb and flow system is to provide a cycle of flooding and draining so the roots get the nutrients they need and also the oxygen they need to grow nice and healthy and prevent root rot. You can also set this up as a bucket system so that the plants are growing in individual containers. This way you can use different grow media for different types of plants. 
In this system that I drew, the nutrient solution is pumped to the plants and can be set up to flood the containers from above or from below or you can set it up so it doesn't flood the containers but rather provides an even drip using some type of drip emitter. Then the water solution drains out and returns to the reservoir to be used again and again. So what type of media is used in this type of system? You have a choice of media. Some people prefer rock wool, some use hydroponic clay pebbles, others use sand, cocoa peat, perlite, or a mixture of these. So you might be wondering, can I use soil to grow my plants in this system? The problem with using soil is that it retains too much moisture and doesn't give the roots the amount of oxygen they need if you keep flooding and draining. So if you use soil, you want to flood and drain only every couple of days or so, if even that. Also, soil may contain pathogens, which is why many people prefer cocoa peat or perlite, which is inert and can be sterile. Yes, you can sterilize soil as well, but that defeats the purpose of using soil since sterilizing the soil would kill both the good and the bad. So cocoa peat or cocoa coir retains moisture, but on the flip side, you can use clay pebbles and then the media will dry out much faster. So you'll need to set a more frequent flood and drain cycle. So that brings us back to the question, how often should we water and drain? This is not easily answered because it depends on a number of things. The type of plants you're growing, their size, how many plants, and how quickly the water evaporates in your environment, which depends on the humidity and the temperature. Also, usually smaller systems need more frequent draining and flooding, whereas a larger system can go longer between cycles. So you'll need to experiment and learn along the way, which is the fun part. Experience is really the best teacher, so trial and error, here we come. If you're using a recirculating method, you'll need to do a full water change and cleaning every two to three weeks, or algae and perhaps some pathogens may begin to build up. I just started using this ebb and flow system by GrowAce, as you can see here. To start, I'm growing a couple of different varieties of lettuce, eight to be precise. Why lettuce? Because it has a short growing cycle and I'm just learning how this system works. It's a little different from the traditional ebb and flow, but the idea is the same. Once I harvest the lettuce, I'm going to set it up with a couple of varieties of tomatoes. I'll be putting out a video on the system soon and stay tuned for the lettuce harvest. Thanks for watching. Bye.